Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. We're going to preach it to, the, to you today and we're going to learn something from the Word of God. So Philippians 4, 8, here we go. One, two, three. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Turn to your neighbor right now and just say, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would come and touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, that you would go before us and behind us and all around us. Father, that you'd open our mind, our eyes, our ears, our heart, that we can see, hear, know, and understand something brand new from the Word of God today, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Look at your neighbor and the way to your seat and just tell them, I don't know what you're thinking about, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Come on, tell them what you're thinking about. <laughs> yeah, give them your credit card number, that's right. <laughs> tell them the, the balance of your checking account, come on. <laughs> tell, them, tell, them, tell them your first girlfriend's name, amen? <laughs> come on. So we, you know, we, we have, a, we have a, 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 a problem today in the church, I think, in, in Christian belief. I think we, we tend to, to, uh, to uh, think that, uh, we think things, that's what we do. We think things that we shouldn't think, and we act upon things that we shouldn't be acting on because we, we think about them. And uh, so Paul, Paul really writes this verse, and I don't think he was uh, ever in English class because uh, if I was, when I was in school, uh, and if I was to turn in a, a sentence like this, uh, in a, in a, and I was to turn it in, the teacher would be like, ah, no, mm -mm. you got too many commas, you got too many run-on statements there. There's so much uh, 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 confusion in the, in the verse because we, we start to think about, uh, and maybe Paul was in that place where he was just starting to think about the, the Philippian church, and he was like, uh, I just got to run on here for a bit. <laughs> and so he started to talk up to, talking to them about, uh, about uh, things that, that I think they could relate with. And these things that he was talking about weren't, weren't the fruit of the Spirit, by the way. Most people, when they read this, this verse, they think, well, it's the it's, it's fruit of the Spirit. But it's really uh, common things that are in existence in the world around us. So, so like, when, we, when I walk out into the city somewhere and I look at a building... I can look, I can stand back at it and I can go, whoa, that's pretty amazing. You know, how did they build that? And I start to look at the way things were put together. And uh, that's just the way my, my mind is. I went swimming one time and uh, I was in the pool and I happened to look up and I, and I began to look at the way the structure was made. And I was like, I just stood there for almost, I don't know, 20 minutes. So long that was I standing there looking up that everybody who walked by me was like, what, what's he looking at? <laughs> but I was, I was in, uh, enthralled with, the, the architecture or the design of the trusses that held up the, the roof over the pool which I was swimming in. And uh, I spent so much time looking at that that, that uh, I still don't really know how they made it exactly. I, I kind of have an idea, but, but it, was, uh, it was something great. But I, I think often uh, we, are, we are so um, uh, taken back with the things that have happened in our life and about how we feel they should be in the future that we forget that we're, we're saved, Holy Ghost-filled Christians. We forget to the, the first word, finally. Because Paul says, finally there, because he is talking to some people who should be at spiritual maturity. Okay? Can I just drop that right there? Spiritual maturity. Say that word with me, spiritual maturity. See, see because, because often we are still drawn away with things that don't have any real value in our, in our walk with God. We get, we get scared, we get confused, we get drawn away, and, and we, begin to, we, begin to, uh, we begin to do the things, worry about the things, say the things that we think about all the time. Amen? Amen. So whatever we're thinking about, we're going to start talking about. Amen. Whatever we're talking about is going to start to manifest in your life. Okay, because, because I don't care. Maybe, maybe this is not for anybody. I'll turn around this way. It, it, maybe if you've been rejected in the past, 
you're scared that you're going to be rejected in the future. And so you won't trust anybody in your life ever again because you know the pain of rejection. Amen? And so, so we can't live our life based on what happened or even what we think about all the time. We have to filter it through the word called virtue. Paul said it at the, at the last part. Virtue. Virtue, you know what virtue is? It's a high moral standard. That's what that is. I don't know about you, but we live in a world today, I don't, I don't know if you've noticed, but the world we live in today really has lost its morals. It's lost its standards. It's lost its ability to... Because to, uh, we, 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 we want to explain away the way people act and justify it and so that, that they can do whatever they want to do and be all right with it. But God, God doesn't let us do whatever we want to do. He, doesn't, he holds us to a different standard, right? And I don't know about you, but my standard comes from the Word of God. As a Christian, your standard comes from the Word of God. Amen? So we must hold that standard into our life. What does the Bible say about this circumstance? What does the Bible say about whatever it is that we dwell on in our mind? And, and, and if we want to trust God, we should start with how we think. Amen? We should start there. Because spiritual maturity comes into our life to a place where we can start to change what we're thinking about, right? It's a great question to consider when we start thinking about what are you thinking about? I, 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 if, if I was honest, some days I get up in the morning and all I do is worry all day long about what could happen. And usually what could happen never happens, at least what I think could happen never happens. And so I end up worrying and wasting my time on something that doesn't really matter. I, and I don't, I don't want to live every day with habitual discipline. Are you with me? With habitual discipline that keeps me doing the same thing I'm doing now. I want change. Say it with me. I want change. Turn to your neighbor and say, it look, sure looks like you need to change. <laughs> it sure looks like you need to change. I mean, I mean, because... <laughs> cause, <laughs> See, uh, set your mind to virtue, not to issues. Woo! Let me drop the mic. <laughs> set your mind to virtue and not to issues. Because if we end up chasing the issues all of our life, I'm going to tell you that you're never going to run out of issues. <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> I know I got issues. I get reminded all the time, okay? Come on now. And so do you. You got issues too, all right? And your issues might look different than my issues, but they're issues just the same. Ooh, man, he's getting all up in there today. So, <laughs> this is what Paul says. He says, is it true? Is what you think about true? Woo! Well, it might be true to you. Have you ever heard that statement? Your truth is not my truth, okay? But I'm going to tell you, there's only one truth. There's one truth, and we have to go to the Word of God for it. I have to go there for it. I can't go to my experience or your experience. I have to go to the Word. Paul says, is it true? So, so mo most of the things we think about have to be filtered through that, is it true? Okay? And I think a lot of the things that we think about then would begin to fall away. Amen? Just with that one little filter. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Truth is more important than functionality or feelings. Ooh. Come on, feelings will keep you trapped in a truth that's not true. And just because you've learned to function in the lie doesn't mean that it's truth and doesn't mean that it's healthy, right? Doesn't mean that it fits into virtue. Amen? And it doesn't mean it fits into praise, okay? And so, so, it's great to get a word. There's churches full of people that go to get a word, but they don't have the word in them. They don't have the word in them. They just, they just go to get a word because they want, they, want, they want their horoscope read. That's what they want. Churches will fill up. Somebody starts prophesying over somebody, even if it's not true. They just come to get the word. But do you have the word? See, because real, real, real root systems 
are founded on truth, not on a word from somebody you don't even know what they do at night. <laughs> you don't really know what they're worshiping. You don't know where they came from and where they're going. Okay? But we need to have the word. We can't even the church today doesn't even really know truth. We don't, we don't really know truth like we should. We're supposed to be the pillar and the ground of truth. That's what the word says. This is where what everything in your life will really stand on in a, in a storm or a difficulty is the foundation of truth. What holds up your life? Truth. Okay? Truth will always hold up your life. Nothing else will really matter, right? It's great to get a word, but this place is not an experience center. This is not an experience center. I have experienced the love of God. I have experienced the grace of God. But I, I didn't come here today to have experience. I come here to, to, to seek truth. I come here to know truth. I come here to let the church, the church, the truth, okay, confront the truth inside of me so that, it, that I can be changed, right? This church is a hospital for healing. It's a hospital for healing. I need healing in my life. Uh, through truth, we will find a word. Amen? Through truth, we're going to find a word. So feelings are dangerous because every sin is wrapped up in your feelings. You want me to prove that to you? Go to, go to James chapter 1, verse 15. It says, James 1, 15 says, Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Every sin that you will ever sin in your life, everything you will ever do uh, that's called sin will be birthed from lust, okay? From your desire to have, your desire to do, your desire to accomplish something. But I'm going to tell you right now, sin always brings death. Death to relationships. Come on. Death to the Spirit of God. Death to the purpose of God. Death, death to wherever it is, whatever God is trying to do in your life. God is trying to do something in our life, and we must not sin, Amen? Because it will bring death, right? Sin. Every sin comes from lust. Comes from lust. That's what the, book, the Word says right there. So, so we must always re make sure. we got to make sure, right? Lust will burn, burst sin, and sin will bring death. That's the Word, right? <laughs> but that's, that's not popular, but it's the truth. <laughs> okay? That's why it's not popular, because it's the truth. It's the truth. So I, I need the truth. I need the Word, right? I don't need what's popular. Prayers are lifted by millions of people all over the world every single day. Most of the prayers, so it's like people are saying, oh God, I wish you'd give me a better job. Oh, oh Lord, I wish you'd give me a better car. I wish you'd fix my wife. I wish you'd fix my husband. I wish you'd help me with my business. I wish you'd do this. I wish you'd do that. And, and I, I, have, you ever, have, you ever, have you ever wondered sometimes why, why, why God is distant from you when you pray? you ever wondered? Have you ever sat and considered that sometimes? Uh, the reason why God is, is distant is because of sin. That's why. That's what separates us from God. Sin. Sin does. And I don't know, I've been, I've been saved since I was 11, maybe a little before that, okay? And I'm going to tell you that I haven't stopped sinning a day in my life pretty much, okay? Every day. But, but I, I have to constantly come back to him and I have to ask him for forgiveness. I have to ask him to come and, and help me, right? When my mind starts thinking that. When my heart starts believing something. When, when, I, when, I, when I listen to someone, you know, I think I said this before, but some, one time someone actually told me, he said, uh, you know, Pastor Everett, you can't preach. And I said, oh. And so some days I get up here, most days, before I come out, I'll, I'll be like, you can't preach. I'll hear that voice. And, and, and you know what? He might be right. But this is what God called me to. I can't preach, but I, I know that God put a gift in me that, that told me that I can't, I'm supposed to preach. Amen? This is my calling. This is where I'm supposed to be. And, and often the same thing is true in your life. Pastor Everett, you're a freak. Yeah, <laughs> I know it. But I'm going to tell you right now, you guys got the same problem. If you're honest enough to admit it, somewhere in your life, someone has done something to you, they've said something to you, they, you've been somewhere you shouldn't have been, and the wrong thing happened, and this happened, and that happened, and, and so we end up with this stronghold in our mind that says, I can't do that. 
It, ha- it doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. And so we begin to shrink back from what God has called us to. And, and he's trying this morning to call you to something better. Amen? Something greater. Something virtuous. Something praiseworthy this morning. And, and he's trying to talk to you through a, 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 a you know, kind of a cute pastor, but, uh, <laughs> but real prayer only happens when we have a real relationship with God. That's what happens. Oh, God help me isn't going to cut it, okay, in most circumstances. Now, I'm saying God can answer that prayer. I'm not saying that God doesn't hear the prayers of millions of people all over the world, but He's looking for somebody to have a relationship with. Amen? He wants to have a relationship with us. And so, Psalms uh, 66, 18 says, if I regard, regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That's what it says. Just so you know, if we have sin in our heart, God's not hearing you. He's not going to answer that prayer because it's, it's a sin thing that separates us, right? Can we just say that, Father, I confess my sins right now? I confess my sins. I ask you to remove my sin from me forever. Amen? <laughs> Amen. It's a simple thing that my sin is removed now as far as the east is from the west. So far as he removed, you know, God, it, it's like, it's like it, it, I've said this a thousand million times probably, but, but we come in, we pray, and we say, Father, forgive me my sins. And God's looking at me, and he says, I choose to forgive you. He said, but I know God knows tomorrow I will sin again. <laughs> but he's making a choice to forgive, right? Not based on what he sees I'm not going to do, because he knows I'm going to do it again. Right, but he's come to. I've come to him today, and he's faithful and just to forgive me of all unrighteousness and to move me forward. Amen. Let the conversation flow freely between between you and God. Amen. Amen. Let it flow, flow freely. You know, on Tuesday nights we have prayer t- prayer time. Okay, we get in here and we we uh, we you know, we have maybe some routines, and I we try to break, Joanne tries to break those routines all the time, and. And, uh, and, and she'll be playing the piano, and sometimes they'll write and sing a new song. And, and sometimes we're praying uh, for our own self, but a lot of times we try to pray for other people. And we've seen God answer prayers, heal bodies. People have come out of the hospital that weren't, weren't supposed to come out of the hospital. We've seen God do miracles in this place. We've seen Him do it. Okay? And, 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 and often, though, when we get in here and we start to pray, it's, it's scary because it's only an hour but it's like, it, takes, it seems like it takes forever. It's like, I can't believe it's been 10 minutes already, been, been five minutes. And, and, and it's really a revelation of the intimacy that we actually have with God, okay? The conversations that we have with Him should, should be talking to Him and listening, all right? Talking and listening. How many of you know a good talker in your life? You got a good talker in your life? I'm married to one. And so... Uh, uh, who's a good listener? I'm, I'm a good listener, okay? But, 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 but it's, it's important to do both, right? Because every relationship involves both talking and listening. Say that, say that to your neighbor. You have to talk and listen. Talk less and listen more, tell them. <laughs> and so, and so let, 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 the, let, it fro, fro, let it flow freely, okay, in prayer, though, okay? Let your prayer... I wonder... I wonder if we could spend the next week, seven days, and, and spend 15 minutes a day in prayer. Every single day. Like, set an appointment on your calendar. Shut the door. Turn off your cell phone. Spend 15 minutes with God every day. I wonder what would happen. I'm going to tell you what happened. I know what happened. Because next Sunday, you all walk through the door, every one of you would be smiling. Every one of you would be smiling. It would be different. Okay? You know why it would be different? Because God is influencing your emotions. He's influencing your heart. He's influencing your mind. Right? Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Talking to God, intercession for others, and then telling them what you need. In that order. That's what it says in that verse. Right? Verse 6. Talking to God. Woo! Ta- praying for others. And then tell them what you need. Woo! 
How many of you start with telling them what you need first? Be honest, let's have an intervention. <laughs> we all start there, okay? God, I just need a million dollars. I just need a new, I need a new jet. I need a new bus, God. I, I just wish I had a new wife. <laughs> I just wish that, I just wish, uh, The reason we start there is because we don't have a relationship. That's why we start there. Because we know, right? I don't even want to wear this verse out anymore, but Romans 8.28 says, and we know all things work together for good to those that love God. Woo, I feel the presence of God. To those who are called according to His, right? Come on, we got He's got a purpose for us. And, and even if we don't understand the reason why this is in our life at this moment, we can trust that God does. Amen? And, 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 and growing in relationship with God starts with talking. And it's called prayer. It's called prayer. Right? And verse 7 says, it says, let me go back. Talking to God, intercession for others, and then supplications brings in verse 7, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Right? We'll, we'll, we'll shall, it doesn't say might, it shouldn't say could, it says shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? 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 My, the peace of God. I want the peace of God. To, that goes right on past my understanding to keep my heart and my mind through Christ. Amen? I, I want that. I want the kingdom now in my life. I want His kingdom here and now in my life. I want whatever He wants. Amen? If it feels good or if it doesn't, I still want the kingdom of God. Amen? Because I want, I want to be born again, translated to life and not to death. Amen? Amen? Jesus is taking us to life, and not just to any kind of life, life more abundantly. Amen? I want more abundant life. Amen? I don't want death, which comes from lust, which comes from sin. Amen? I want life. Amen? John chapter 3, John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night because he was ashamed and he was scared. He was afraid. He comes to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, I, I highlight these words in my Bible, but I, I highlighted Rabbi, teacher, miracles, accept. Okay, but let me just read the verse. There, uh, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, and no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him in verse 3, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, this is not a popular message right here in this verse. If I had more time, I'd break it all the way down for you. But the church, Jesus is not interested in your experience of him being in his presence. He's interested in you being born again. Yeah. Let me go sit down somewhere. <laughs> sit down. Because that's it. That's it. He wants you to be born again. He came to earth, died, rose again, went to the heaven, and sent his spirit back to you so you can be born again. Amen? Not so you can stay the same. Not so you can keep doing, not so you can go through the struggles. Not so you can keep doing what you've always done. Not so you can keep thinking like I always thought. Not so I can always be under the problem, not over the problem. Not so I can always be this or that. He, he came to set you free. He came so that you can be born again. Born again. Except a man be born again. He can't even see the, God, see, see the kingdom of God. It, it wasn't the experience that concerned Jesus at all. It was the condition of Nicodemus' soul that concerned Christ. It's, it's not an experience, but a transformation that needs to occur in our life. Amen? And we, we need to go come to a place where I don't want to experience God. I want to be transformed by God. I, I want everything in my life to be different. I want to get up tomorrow if I got money or don't got money. I want this face to declare that there is a God inside of me that I can walk in peace even if I don't understand it. Amen? 
I want to talk to you about concrete for just a few moments. Concrete. The liberty of obedience is greater than the experience of the past or the hope of the future. I want to be free here and now. I want to be free here and now. If, if we live our life with expectation of Jesus' return, instead of the dread of the past and the burden of the accomplishment of the day, what would your life look like? Maybe you should say that with me. Jesus has come back. back. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, Jesus has come back. He's coming. Now, now say this, I'm, ex, I'm expecting him. I'm expecting him. I'm expecting him. You know, I don't know what it's going to look like when he comes back. You know what? All I know is the world's going to go to hell in a handbasket, okay? There's going to be people uh, la- laughing and mocking God. There's going to be, uh, people are going to be calling evil good and good evil. There's going to be a, a lack of morals in the country. There's going to be uh, probably some Christians that are going to get killed again. People are going to come and, and say they're doing God a favor because they're, they're killing the guy preaching up there. They, that's hate speech and, and that's not truth. That's, that's not our truth. We don't believe that anymore. That's old school. That's, that's some a, 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 antique, a, ancient uh, Bible uh, belief thumper. He's a, he's a whatever. And, and so they'll, they'll put all kind of adjectives in front of it, but they'll justify the actions because, well, you know what? You know, it's just, that's their truth. Right. Jesus is still going to come back. Right. <laughs> he's still coming. He's still coming. What are you doing, though? What are you doing? Why are you wasting your life on something that you can't change anyways? See, see, concrete is something hard, something, something bad. If you want to break concrete, you've got to get a jackhammer. And yeah, I wanted to bring a jackhammer out here and put it on the stage, but Andy said there was wood up there, and I couldn't do it. But I, I'd really like to do it because, you know, if you're going to shake yourself a little bit and you're going to break something out of your life, it's going to look goofy, okay? It's going to make some noise. Dust is going to happen, and things are going to change. It's going to get uncomfortable for a while. You're going to have to get a broom or a, a vacuum cleaner or something to get rid of the dirt and the debris. But something has to change. See, see, if I could just live with an expectation, if I could just live with an expectation, what would my life look like? It would look different. Amen. I know, I know that God is doing something in my life. I know that He's changing my relationships. I know that my finances are in. I know, I know, I know that He's coming again. I, I expect Him to show up. I expect Him to show up in my life. Things that are true or lies, we continue to perpetuate. Things that are honest. I needed a Savior. I did. If I'm honest about it, I needed to be saved. I needed somebody to deliver me. I needed someone to set me free. I needed someone to come into my... I needed something in my life. I needed a Savior. And Jesus was there for me, if I'm honest. He's there for me today. He's there for me tomorrow. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's here for me right now. If I'm honest. Turn to your neighbor and just tell him, say, God's got his hands full with you. (laughs) He's got his hands full with you. Y'all need to be more like Pastor Everett. So, (laughs) things that are just, things that are just, I want to tell you, God is just. Say that with me. God is just. Even if I don't understand His justice system. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because somebody needs to be set free today. Come on now. They've held too much, they had too much free rent in your mind and in your heart. Somebody needs to be set free today. Come on. God is just. Say it with me really loud. God is just. He's a just God. He's just. I no longer carry the burden of justifying, though, that, that event in my life. I'm not trying to justify anymore. I'm releasing to God justice. Justice. And justice isn't just a little dog's name. Okay? It's what God does best. 
Amen? It's what he does best. It's like things that are pure. Did you know newborn babies have to learn to lie? They come out pure. They come out, they have a conscience. They don't, they don't want to, they don't even want to, they don't, they, they don't even have to know what to say, nothing, but they learn to be angry. They learn to be selfish. They learn to lust. They learn to sin. They learn all those things because they're taught by the best. <laughs> this is so true. Okay? See? The world corrupts us. Okay? Just because we're born here means it corrupts us. It corrupts us because we're born here. Right? We were born into sin. We were born separated from God. And God sent Jesus to bring us back together so that we can be different than the world. So that we can have the answer the world doesn't have. Right? Things that are lovely. When is the last time that you walked outside the door of your house, stopped, looked at a little bird, and said, Whoo! Hi, Mr. Birdie. <laughs> you, you're so beautiful. <laughs> or you stopped and you seen the little flower or the green grass or, or, or the blue sky. Someone asked me the other day, they said, uh, Pastor Ever, why is the sky blue? And I said, that's the way God made it. <laughs> you don't want to know why it's blue, though? It's, a, it's reflecting the water. Well, why does it reflect the water? There's nothing up there. Yes, there is. <laughs> Come on now. There's an atmosphere. Come on. There's an atmosphere up there that God placed there so that we could have oxygen to breathe. The exact amount of oxygen. Like we, we don't have too much oxygen. Some of us don't have enough sometimes, but but there, it's all there for you. The resources are already there for you. God put them there by God. But that's a different sermon. But the sky is blue because it's the way God made it. Amen? He made it. The birds, the... the did, did you know someone told me this? People that have committed suicide many times are looking for somebody to smile at them. When's the last time you went around and smiled at somebody? You can't smile at somebody if you don't have joy on the inside. You, you can't even, you can't even uh, uh, say, say good morning or give somebody a hug. That's lovely. A hug is lovely. Amen? Some of, some of us need a hug. Somebody out there needs a smile. Oh, it's, I want to do a work for God. Try smiling for a whole day. Try, try, try giving somebody a hug. Just one a day. Come on, married people in the room. Start right there. Try, 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 try. <laughs> I'm getting kind of crazy now. Come on now. We, 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 what are, what are love? You guys are lovely to me. I'm looking at every one of you. You're lovely. You're lovely. You're, you're, you're kind of ugly, but you're lovely anyways. <laughs> lovely, 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 lovely. Okay? You in the back. You guys online. Lovely. You're lovely. Okay? You're lovely. I want you to know that. You're lovely. But, but, but we, we have to begin to process things that are lovely. Lovely. God puts them in our life. How about good report, right? Good report, good report. I could preach a whole message. I don't have enough time to preach a whole message on this. Good report because uh, I'll just say this though. Garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> you can't even run a computer if you got bad programming. Come on. How are we supposed to run our life with bad programming? Amen? You can't. You can't run your life that way. So give a good report. But I'm going to tell you right now, before you can even give a good report, you have to hear it. You want to know where that comes from? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the... 
Word of God. Amen? So, so, so I'm going to say it like this, like you've never heard it before, you've never heard me say it. How much time do you spend reading the Bible? Okay? We read, we read a, uh, uh, one verse this morning at church. Is this the first time? <laughs> Don't look at nobody. Is this the first time all week that you actually opened your Bible? Is this the first time all week that you actually heard the Word? Come on. I know, I know, I'm busy. I got that one. Yeah, huh? Okay. That's why you think about the things you think about and do the things you do. Amen? Amen? Gossip is not a report, by the way. To hear it or to speak it, because you know there are some people across town that are talking today about me. Woo! And probably you too. Amen? And you want to know what? Let them talk. Okay? Okay? Because uh, one, one woman's story in, in Matthew 26, 13. Matthew 26, 13 says, this, this, this is a one, one woman's story. Mary, the sister of Lazarus. She says, Jesus says, Verily I say, verily I say unto you, whosoever, wheresoever this gospel is preached, in the whole, earth, whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. And this woman broke an alabaster box. It had great value, almost a year's wages, I guess, over the feet of Jesus in the presence of a bunch of unbelieving folks. And the aroma of the perfume that she put on his feet filled the room and she dried the feet she was washing his feet with her hair she was she was giving herself to god and the aroma filled the room the aroma filled the room and and jesus said she he said this woman has been set free that's what he said and then he said she worshiped me with abandon and then he, she, she, he, Jesus said, this shall be a memorial for all the world wherever the gospel is preached. This woman, what she did. And I'm going to say this to you, that we also have been set free. Yeah. We also worship with abandon. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have a memorial going up for all the world to see. Come on. Come on now. Come on now, this is real invasive, this little, this little word right here. Because, because what is your memorial? <laughs> Come on, what does your worship look like? And, and are, are you really free? Those are some good questions that we can ask ourselves, okay? Because we are already displaying the answers, if we're really honest, okay? But I, 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 I for one, want change in my life, amen? I want change, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm free, I'm a worshiper, I'm going to testify of God's goodness, right? I'm, I'm free, I'm a worshiper, and I'm going to testify, right? Let, let, me, let, me just, let me just finish up here, okay? You ready? You ready for me to be done? <laughs> Amen. He talks too long. <laughs> Virtue will never work. Where, where comparison exists. I can't compare myself to you and have, expect, expect for my, my, my moral standard to rise, okay? Because I'm better than you. Go ahead, sit, tell your neighbor right now. Just look at him side like this. Like this. I'm better than you. Do you feel better than me? See, because see, this is what happens... This is what happens in the church because I'm going to tell you right now, praise is going up from us anyways. It's going up from us anyways. Okay? Uh, Paul is asking us to filter everything through virtue and through praise. Through virtue and through praise. But what we do is we're praising stuff we shouldn't be praising. Okay? And we're worshiping things that should, don't deserve our worship because they really haven't done anything for us except lead us to bondage 
and to sin, okay? And, and so what if you address all the problems in your life the same way you do when you, as you come to church? What if that's the way we address all the circumstances in our life, the same way we come to church? Like, I, I just got up. I didn't even brush my teeth. I, 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 I found these clothes laying in a pile. I, I, I didn't get enough sleep last night because I didn't, want, I didn't really want to be used by God. I just wanted to show up and make an appearance so the pastor would know I was here. I, I slept halfway through the sermon. I never even took a single note. I don't actually want to change. I just want him to, I just want him to know I'm here. Because yeah, really, if you're not going to take a note, you're not going to change either, right? You're not writing nothing down. How are you going to remember it? You're not going to remember nothing. And nothing will ever change. God deserves our best. This platform up here is not a stage. This is an altar. It's an altar. That means that we don't approach the altar <laughs> without prayer. We don't approach this altar without, without conviction of the Holy Spirit, without, without desiring to give Him honor with all that we do. This is an altar and not a stage. Right? If I came to church, and if I dealt with all my problems with the same religious tenacity that I've always done in my life, I'm going to tell you right now, I wouldn't have much love in my life. My heart would not be soft. It would be hard. Because people are mean. People are nasty. People say the wrong stuff. People, even good people, say the wrong thing at the wrong time. They, we, we, we just don't know. But, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's not about a routine called religion that brings us into relationship with God. It's a heart that says, I want change that will bring me to relationship with God. And that is what will cause us to change. Romans 12. I'm closing. I really am. Romans 12, 17 through 21. I don't read this in the Passion Translation for, for you guys. I don't always read the Passion. I do, I do have it, but I don't always use it. But this one here I want to, because I felt like it gave it more meaning, this verse, these verses. It says, Romans 12, 17 through 21, it says, Never hold a grudge. Can we be honest today? How many of you have held a grudge? I see when somebody do this, they were like this. <laughs> they don't want else to know it. <laughs> they, they give me this. They say. <laughs> That's the way some of us worship God. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. Never hold a grudge or try to get even. How many of you have a plan <laughs> to get even? Okay, I'll turn this way. <laughs> Never hold a grudge or try to get even, but plan your life around the noblest way to benefit others. Ooh. Ooh. Because see, see how, how are you planning to, to benefit somebody else? That's, that's, that's big time virtue right there. Big time virtue, right? Say, say, say that with me. That's virtuous. <laughs> Come on, say it again. That's virtuous. That's virtuous, all right? A life that's planning to do something for somebody else. Verse 18, do your best to live as everybody's friend. As everybody's friend. You know, you know uh, I have been accused of being judgmental. Okay? I have, I have been accused of not speaking out when I know the pattern in someone's life. But sometimes, I feel like Christ never comes to you and says, uh, you know, you're ugly and your mom dressed you funny. I don't think he ever does that. He comes and says, I love you. And he opens the door. He opens the door for a relationship with you. And relationship is what changes you. Okay? Okay? That's the way, that's how we know Christ is working in our life. 
when we are more concerned about the relationship. Not to say that I'm not going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth to you. If I get the opportunity, I'll tell you the truth every time. Come on. I'll tell you the truth. Okay? You may not like the truth, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I may, I may use long-suffering like God does, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen? That's, what, that's, the, way, that's what, the way we should be. All right? But we're looking to be somebody's friend. Right? Be- beloved, verse 19, don't be obsessed with taking revenge. If the first thought in your heart is to get even or to get back what the devil stole from you, okay, maybe you need to pray about that a little bit, okay? So don't be, don't be obsessed. I like that word obsessed right there. Don't be obsessed. Like that's all I think about. I can't stop thinking about it. It's all it is. It's all, always this thing. And it's over and over in my life. Every morning when I get up, it's still my friend. You know, don't, don't be obsessed with taking revenge, but, but leave that to God's righteous justice. Amen. For the scriptures say, if you don't take justice in your own hands, I will release justice for you. Woo! Woo! Sometimes we, can't, we don't have the power anyways to do anything, but we keep carrying it anyways trying to do what God is supposed to do because we think we can do it better and we really don't trust God to do it anyway. So we're going to keep carrying it until something happens to the other person and then we can finally say, whew, look what God did. But we wasted all of our life till that moment. I was riding in the car with somebody a couple weeks ago and they said to me, said, well, at least I can get my life back. And I said, no, you can't get your life back. All that's happened, all the days, all the months, all the years that have gone on from when it started to this moment, you can't get back. It's already gone. The only thing you can do is stand up and smile and say, now I'm a little wiser. Now I can do a little bit more. Now I, now I, got, I got a little more peace, a little more joy. Because God brought me through this one, He can take me through another one. And then not waste another day trying to go through the same thing over and over again on the next one. Because there's always going to be a next one. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> as soon as you walk out the door, someone else is coming in, okay? And, and there'll be a next one, there'll be a next one, there'll be a next one. And, and I've got to continue to filter that through virtue and praise. Right? I will release justice for you, says the Lord. If and, and it says, and if your enemy is hungry, buy him lunch. <laughs> Man, am I hungry right now? <laughs> Win him over with kindness, it says. <laughs> if, for, for your surprising generosity will awaken their conscience. Their conscience. Right? Because they know what they did. Mm -hmm. Amen? They know what they did, but they're conscious. God God will reward you with favor. Verse 21. Never let evil defeat you. Never let evil defeat you. But defeat evil with good. Amen? 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 Defeat it with good. God made you good. When you got saved, you are good. Amen? You are good. You don't have to worry anymore about anything going on around you because what's in you is more than enough. Amen? Amen? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Or the circumstance is your shepherd. Amen? So Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's what he did on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yesterday, it's all in concrete. Say that with me. Yesterday is all in concrete. I used to have a youth group. And one day, I preach this message, and Joanne, she, she tries to preach it every once in a while, but I don't, I don't even have the notes to it anymore. But 
she remembers this because, because I said this little, little statement at the end of the, this message. I said, I said, beep, 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 beep. It was a concrete truck, right, backing up. That's what that beep up, backup alarm is. Beep, beep, beep. And there's a, there's a chute like this one on my shirt. Concrete is being poured out on, on the, even the very seconds and the moments that have just passed. Concrete is already, every word that I've spoken, every, every, every action, every, every bit of my life is already formed in concrete. And, and, and it's getting hard right now. They smoothed it out and it's getting hard. And I can't change anything back there. I can't change a single thing. But forgiveness, forgiveness is just what Jesus said. He said, Father, forgive them, for they, for they know not what they do. He said, Father, and what, what Jesus did is created a pathway for us to come right up to him. Amen? And we can walk forward with him. Amen? Because we don't have to worry about all the things that we can't change anymore. And this is what I want to say to you today. You must forgive everybody in your life, even yourself, because you can't change yesterday. And when you finally give up, give it up to God, when you finally give it up to Him, He will release justice on your part. Amen? Amen? He will, he will bring whatever needs to come into your life. He will bring, I want to say this for somebody, joy back into your life. Amen? He will, he will set your, your, he'll set your face free. <laughs> he'll set your face free, amen? And, and, and you'll be beautiful. You can give a smile to somebody who needs a smile. A wave to somebody. You can give a hug to somebody because you really do love them. Amen? Because the love of God is looking for somebody to flow through to somebody else, amen? He's not looking just for you to be happy, <laughs> Amen? He's looking for the world. He loves the world. He loves the world. Concrete. Amen? Without the filter of forgiveness, we are forgetting what God has brought us from. We are forgetting, amen, of his love for us. I want to ask uh, the altar team to come forward today and uh, I'm going to pray a simple prayer for you, but if, if you want somebody to agree with you tonight, today, in prayer, we, we're here for you. If you need forgiveness today, we're here for you. If you need to, to have joy again in your life, we're here for you. If you need deliverance from something in your life, we're here for you, okay? And so I don't want you to go out the door the same way you came in. Amen. You know who you are. If you need prayer, come on. You can trust that God is working in this place. Amen. Amen. And we love you. Every one of us love you. Okay. And, and we're, we're, we're not just going to pray one prayer for, with you. We're going to continue to pray with you and agree with you and watch you walk that out. Amen. Amen. So I want to pray. I want to pray. So if you would stand with me. Let's just pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, come and touch our hearts. Come and touch our mind today, Lord. Father, we're asking for forgiveness, Lord, today. That you would come and remove things from us that need to be removed. Father, that you would uh, cause us to rise up, Father, and to look again into your face and realize that we need you in our life. Father, we need a Savior. And Father, uh, the, our minds, Father, the things we have grown accustomed to, Lord, I pray that you would quicken our mind right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we just pray right now that the Holy Spirit would come. Come and convict us. And God, help us to change the way we think. Help us to let virtue flow again. Help us to begin to praise you again, Lord, so that we wouldn't be stuck, stuck and confused, Lord, but, but that we would trust you again. Father, that we would trust you again. 
We thank you, Lord. We thank you for deliverance. And so we bind the devil on every side. We, we plead the blood of Jesus right now over your people from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Every past uh, hurt or problem or, or whether it's rejection or anger or lust, all of those things, Father, we, we just plead the blood right now over it and we ask you for, for forgiveness, Lord. Father, that we would be a vessel of honor and of praise, that we would be a memorial to others around, a display, Father, of your great love and mercy. And we just honor you right now with all that we are, Father. We used to sing that song, just as I am, without one plea. I, I, I just want Jesus. I just want deliverance. I just want joy and peace. I just want all that you have for me, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen.